Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome. How are we today? How's everyone's Monday going? I hope you had a great start to your week. This is the start of the second week of our Women's History Month series. Uh, All we do is win. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us today. We've got some good stuff coming up. So of course, really quickly, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping. So again, welcome. This is our series going into the discipline of software engineering. We're breaking down all the different types of roles in the space and what a normal day looks like and what it's going to look like to get into the industry. So again, thank you guys so much for coming. We really appreciate it. And just for an intro, my name is Javon. I am the COO of Mentor Me Collective. By day, I am a software engineer and content creator. I create content on YouTube for women of color with non-traditional backgrounds um, and help them transition into tech. So uh, this evening, I'll be your host for this episode of All We Do Is Win, and we're going into security engineering, but in gaming. I know some of y'all are hyped right there. Yeah, some of y'all are so hyped right there. So really quickly, if you're a gamer, drop drop a heart emoji. Let me know. Are you a gamer? What games do you like to play um, specifically from EA? What EA games do you like to play? Um, And if you're even if you're not a gamer, again, thank you for coming. That's cool. We're here to learn all the things tonight. Um, So tell us where you're from. I'm from NYC, of course. I know we have so many people all over, though. So let us know where you're from, where you're tuning in from today. okay? and of course, take a second to share this. Share this with your uncle, your cousin, your friend, your sister, your mother, your mother's cousin, your first cousin, your second cousin, all the people. Share it with everybody um, and then tag us. Let us know. You don't know whose life this will change. So um, people uh, come and they pay hundreds of dollars to find out some of the information that we are giving you tonight. So I need you guys to share this as much as possible, even if you just share the replay, right? So again, we are celebrating Women's History Month with some of the greatest Black women in tech. So we want to take a moment to shout them out and thank them for being a part of our community as mentors and coming in to educate them, to educate us with their expertise. So shout outs to y'all. Thank you guys so much for participating. So um, let us know. It's time for a vibe check. Where are you guys in your journey Are you in school? Are you in boot camp? Are you self-learning? Did you just graduate? Tell us all the things. Are you applying for your first role? Um, Are you growing and glowing in your career? Drop the emoji that corresponds where you are in your journey. Um, We love to be able to connect everyone and have everyone network, especially if they're in different parts of their journeys. So each one can teach one, okay? And while you do that, I really want to take a minute to tell you guys about a really, really, really special event we have coming up. It's called Convos in Color, um, and it's featuring Adobe Design, Adobe Design. So this is basically a fireside chat where we have a few um, hiring managers, uh, recruiters, and some very, very special guests uh, come in and tell us, you know, they have candid conversations with us about diversity, culture and inclusion specifically at Adobe. So they will have positions that you can come and apply to. Um, So be ready with your resume so you can shoot your shot and ask questions directly to these hiring managers. And let's see, you know, you never know where to go, where it'll go from there. So just sign up. It's free. Um, We will leave you the registration link in the chat. Okay. So before we jump in, let's get into a couple of things. Um, Before we get started, we're going to go over the team uh, and joining the team. And then we're also going to tell you about our mentorship program. And we're going to talk a little bit about our text reminders, our Etsy shop, and of course, our infamous giveaways. We have a Women's History Month giveaway that we're doing this month, and we really want you guys to participate. So this is the team here. This is the gang. This is the squad. You know, we have the lovely CEO, um, Chanel, and then the COO, myself, and then the lovely, lovely Dominique. Dominique is like, he's people ops, but he's really just a gap filler. He does, 
he's like the backbone for all of us. He's he's uh, the man of hundred grand. So um, that is the team right there. But we want you guys to join us, right? So if you have any specific skills in video editing, social media, um, sponsorship, email uh, email support, um, we want you to be part of the team, and we ask that you will apply. Um, and put your efforts towards helping some first-gen techies because that's really what we're all about. That is our mission here at MMC. We are here to serve, and we serve with full hearts. So um, just reach out to the team, and you can email us, and we'll reach out back to you shortly after. Uh, we also have our mentorship program. Listen, this mentorship program is going to be so big. Um, I really, really, really want you guys to apply. It's about 30 to 40 people that we're, ex we're accepting. Um, the program will support you basically with job seeking and technical skills in the respective, uh, in the respective fields that you guys want to do. So whether you like design or engineering or data science or PMs, like I encourage you to apply. It's a free, it's a free program. There are people that paid to get in this program and now it's free. So we really, um, we really want to encourage you that this is a good time to apply and really uh, break into the industry. And also uh, we have the opportunity to uh, have people from, what was I going to say? I'm sorry. I lost my thought, y'all. <laughs> so uh, you could apply to be a mentee or a mentor. So just go to the website, click mentorship, and then you can apply that way. And the same thing again, like I just said, if you want to be a mentee or mentor, go ahead and apply. Um, so yeah, we also have some MMC text reminders. Um, the text reminders only go out when we're um, talking about giveaways or um, events. We do get a lot of messages that, oh, I missed this event. Was this recorded? I missed it. Oh my God, I can't make it. But if you join the text mess the text message reminders and all that stuff, uh, you will be uh, messaged every time we have an event. Uh, so that way you'll never be able to miss it. Thank God we're recording this. So we're doing y'all a favor. So you can always watch the replay. Um, we also opened up our Etsy shop. Y'all, our Etsy shop is fire for Women's History Month. We are featuring some really dope, uh, some really dope uh, clothing and some tumblers we have. We also have, um, what is it called? It's not a sheet. Oh my Lord, why can I get it? And I, and I have one of my own, but uh, we have like these really dope sheets. We have like all these different uh, stickers that you can also buy. So please run on over there and show your support by buying. This really helps um, first gen techies um, uh, in our fundraiser to be able to buy uh, software and technology that they may need. And of course, what is an MMC event without a giveaway? Thank you, Tiffany. Tiffany understands. She gets it. Tiffany understood the assignment. It's Monday. It's all good. Thank you, Tiff. Um, so what is an MSC of, of event without a giveaway? We have one, of course. So to be able to enter the giveaway, uh, we want you guys to obviously take notes, take really, really, really good notes. Um, we also want you to uh, attend all of the sessions and bring a friend. It's important. It's super, super important. We also want you to uh, connect with all of us, connect with us on your social media platforms. We're on Instagram. Um, we're here on YouTube. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're pretty much everywhere. And then we also want you to complete the quiz. Now, the quiz comes when you sign up for the um, MMC text reminders. So make sure you sign up for those to be able to get the quiz. So, of course, uh, we want you guys, we have a photo booth, a really dope photo booth, by the way. Um, take your phone out, scan the QR code and put in, um, take a selfie or you can put in a really dope selfie. That's what I do, y'all. Sometimes I'm not always camera ready. So I put in a dope, dope selfie and share it with us. Let us know that you were here at this session specifically. Um, also, like we said, again, take good notes. Um, follow us on social media and of course text MMC to 866-901-1914. And here are the giveaway prizes. We have Apple Air Tags, we have a home pod mini, we have a hydrate water bottle. This water bottle is kind of dope because you're able to do like different uh 
competitions with your friends, which is really, which is really, really cool. And then we also have the Nano Leaf um, Smart Light Bulbs. So that's also another really dope um, prize that we have. But who's ready for the main event? Who is ready? Who is ready? We have an awesome guest here who does security engineering in gaming, specifically at EA. So I really want to, I really want you guys to give like a super, super, super warm welcome to my friend Jordan. Hi. Hey, how's it going today? It's going, it's going, girl. How's your Monday? Going good. Um, that hour that we lost is definitely. Definitely getting to me, but listen, <laughs> I can can't complain. Can we yeah. talk about it? <laughs> I'm super it's mad about cool. that one. Watching the clock go from 1:59 to 3 a.m. A whole mess. A whole <laughs> mess. Listen. So, um, but we're super excited to have you here. Thank you so much yes. for joining us. Thanks I'm not gonna me. waste any more time. Uh, I'm gonna let you come up on the stage now, and I'm gonna exit. Okay. Okay. Thank you so All much. Right. Um, hello, everyone. Again, my name is Jordan Green. Um, this is Security Engineering and Gaming 101. Uh, so today we're going to start off with a brief introduction about myself and kind of how I got my foot in the door at EA and in my career field in general, working uh, as a security engineer and just engineering overall. Then we're going to touch on what I do on a day to day basis and a list of resources that I have found most useful and still are, still utilize to this day, um, a year into my career. Um, again, hello, Jordan Green. I am a junior security engineer at Electronic Arts, originally from Prince George's County, Maryland, but uh, prior to graduating in May of 2021, I relocated to Orlando, Florida, and I be relocating once again soon to Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, so I got introduced to EA in 2019 at Black Enterprise Tech Connect event, which was about a four day long event where we competed in a hackathon, went to different companies within the Austin area. So Dell, Electronic Arts and PayPal, but uh, electronic arts clearly stood out to me the most out of out of the three because um, I work there now. I came on board pretty late in May of 2020. I probably came on about a week prior to my start date. So my, my hiring process was pretty rapid and I was blessed enough, fortunate enough to be able to um, work throughout the last two years of my um, college experience. So I transitioned to full-time in June of 2021. Uh, I had my first experience programming, um, coding at least in high school, where the objective of the game was kind of just to move this robotic character in this maze and avoid um, other soldiers within the game uh, my next experience coding would be prior to starting my freshman year at Johnson C. Smith University. I participated in the Google CSSI program. And during that program, I kind of felt as though programming wasn't for me. And I guess I can chalk that up to um, just how fast everything moved. It was about months and months of information jammed into about four weeks, uh, each week focusing on a different language. So it was just like capacity overload pretty quickly. And I, I just came to the conclusion that coding is not for me. I went into college as a biology major and I was quickly humbled again <laughs> once I took uh, chemistry. So I converted back to computer science the spring semester of my freshman year. Um, so what is security engineering? Security engineering is about building systems, dependable systems. Um, it focuses on tools, processes, methods um, needed to design, implement, and test complete systems or adapt to existing systems. 
so here's some quick facts that I pulled that I found pretty interesting. There is close to 26,000 security engineers in the US, but only 14.8% are women. Um, women earn 94 cent for every dollar that is earned by a man. And as you can see at the bottom, the, the field is currently dominated by, um, you know, but uh, hopefully we can change that with programs like Mentor Me Collective and help more people of color get into the field of security engineering and just other engineering roles as well. Uh, so a little bit of background about my team and what we do. I'm currently sitting on enterprise security within endpoint security. So endpoint security, the endpoint security team makes up about six individuals, um, kind of each one in, under every pillar that we have here, blue team, red team, and purple team. Purple team, I guess you can say is my manager's manager, um, who's the head of all the, the entire team. My role falls under blue team, which is threat hunting and identifying vulnerabilities um, prior to you know things hitting the fan. And of course, red team hacking, pen testing, and exploiting those vulnerabilities that we may find on the blue team. Uh, I personally would like to convert over to the red team. Uh, I've actually been taking a Python course to help me improve on my programming skills and just kind of uh, take that next, take my career to the next level. It's all about expanding and pretty much figuring out what works for you. Blue team things is cool, but I feel like in the long run, programming and coding in Python specifically will help me in the long run as well as getting certifications. Um, but of course, again, the blue team focuses on infrastructure security, incident response, threat hunting, red team, ethical hacking, pen testing, vuln exploitation, and the purple team kind of gives you the best of both worlds. So they're able to do the threat hunting as well as the pen testing, and they kind of just bring every both teams together, the red and the blue team together, and say, here's where we can improve. This is what your team needs to do versus your team, and how we can all work together as one collaborative team. Uh, so a day in the life for me is uh, Mondays is pretty much focused on planning, checking emails. Mondays, I'm pretty swamped with emails. Luckily, I have Mondays to myself, no, no team meetings or anything like that. Uh, I probably come into the office on Monday with about 60 plus emails from over the weekend of things that we've uh, scanned within our, our own awareness space. And I'm just running through those, seeing any new changes, um, reviewing things, seeing if anything new has popped up and updating tickets. Tuesdays, I meet with my manager and uh, we kind of just discuss things going forward. Google Docs have, has been our best friend thus far, as far as keeping track of everything. Um, who owns what, what's next steps, what we need to do, where we're going, where we wanna take specific projects. Uh, to that, it's been updating tickets and uh, a workflow that I created during my internship. And a lot, of my, a lot of my work is centered around sending emails and talking to different teams, trying to find owners of who owns what, because EA has been around for quite some time. So sometimes we have things from the early 2000s that we have no idea who manages what. Um, so a lot of a lot of my job is hunting down owners as well as the vulnerabilities. Wednesdays again, we just continue to expand on what was said in our one on ones on Tuesdays. Um, meetings with third parties. We have a lot of companies that scan a lot of things for us or um, host a lot of host a lot of domains for us. So we kind of just check in with them, making sure everything is good from our side as well as those. If anything is needed from EA, we kind of deliver those. 
Fridays, again, we're wrapping up earlier email threads from the beginning of the week and planning for the following week. Um, Fridays are also pretty light for me, no meetings. I pretty much just spend the day by myself, making sure I have all of my ducks in a row to continue success going into the following week and so on and so forth. Um, here are some resources that we have. So if you are interested in learning about what it would be like to work on a software engineering team in EA, you can um, join the Forge Software Engineering Virtual Experience Program, which I helped design myself. So with that program, you'll get to experience what it's like as a software engineer, a security engineer, and even um, a game and animation in engineer. So you kind of experience three internships with one. It's self-paced, takes about five to six hours to complete. Um, so I found that really useful, um, especially with me creating it. And I kind of was able to give my input as far as what I did during my internship, That I things that I still do on my day-to-day -day basis as a full-time employee. Uh, again, I'm inter I'm currently working on learning Python, so the Python bootcamp has been really helpful for me. Those are not free, but um, Udemy has great promotions that run pretty much every week, where you can get these hundred and fifty dollar courses for twelve to thirteen dollars. Um, so the Python Bootcamp, if you're looking to go into the red team, um, you have the Python Bootcamp and ethical hacking as well. And if you're more so interested in the role that is not coding heavy, um, I definitely recommend the blue team Bootcamp that kind of gives you the basics of um, how to navigate, you know, um, the vulnerability awareness space and things like that. And my favorite, a lot of these Coursera courses are sponsored by IBM. Um, so all of the Coursera courses come with the certification at the end that I know a couple of people that have got hired at major companies like Deloitte, um, just simply off taking these cybersecurity courses. So I definitely recommend those. The IT fundamentals is pretty much the basics. And the last two show you if you want to be an analyst, um, go into an analyst role in cybersecurity. Things um, that I found pretty helpful thus far, uh, starting my career. Um, yeah, so again, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm still looking for <laughs> those mentors and more resources to again expand on my career. I'm pretty well, pretty early off. I went into EA with no experience, just kind of winging it on a day to day basis on a job, and I've done great so far. But again, you can all you can never stop learning. Um, so please connect with me on LinkedIn, and um, feel free to ask any questions. <laughs> hey, thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Listen, you said a lot of good points there. I really, first of all, I just want to say I really love your journey. Um, I love the fact that you mentioned that it wasn't, you know, <laughs> it wasn't all peaches and cream and you were like, oh, I don't know if coding is for me. Let me tell you that. Even in the field, I just be like, Mm -mm. I don't know <laughs> for me like mind you already got the job like if you're in the job full-fledged and I'm like no I don't I don't know about this I don't know about this every day that's my life so yeah I feel like I'm hitting a crisis every week where I'm just like what else can I do what's the next step for me uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out as I go so yeah uh -oh. And then you have those friends who are in the, the field and they're talking to you about what they're working on. You're just like, wow, that sounds pretty cool. But again, I work for EA. Can it get any cooler than that? <laughs> pretty, pretty much. So do you have, like, I'm just curious, because do you have like family members coming up to you like, ah, cousin, like, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> every family event. I'm probably the family member that comes around the least. So when they see me like, you're in town because again, I, I'm literally my whole family is based in Maryland, so I'm the only one that's in another state that's mm -hmm. 13 hours away. 
Yeah. So they seem they're just like, okay, big time, look at you, money. Can <laughs> I get a free time. game? Can I get an expansion pack on the Sims? I'm no. like, <laughs> hello, how are you? <laughs> it's the specificity for me. She's like, can I get an expansion pack? Yes, that The Sims is so big. I have a cousin. She plays mm-hmm. The Sims twenty four seven every time she sees me. Oh, so when wow. is this dropping? When when it can we? Can you take this feedback to this team on EA? Ooh. I'm just like, <laughs> listen, you get what you're getting right now. I don't even work anywhere near those teams. Mm-hmm. Oh man. So speaking so speaking of that, I do have a question, right? So you were talking a little bit about wanting to get into Python. I was just curious as to. Well, you're learning Python right now, right? Yes. Um, so why did you pick Python out of like all the other languages? This is not me hating y'all because I know somebody going to come in the <laughs> comments and be like, what's wrong with Python? I'm not saying nothing. I just want to know. <laughs> yeah, so Python, um, sometimes when I'm bored, I do like to just browse different um, descriptions and what's required at jobs that's similar to mine, security engineering. And mm-hmm. I see Python is the most relevant one. Mm-hmm. So I figure, you know, if I do want to take my my journey into cybersecurity a little more um, serious and just go head first, um, take a deeper dive, Python would probably be the best route. Mm-hmm. I tried the Java thing in school doing comp sci, and let's just say I like I like that Python is just simple to get started when you're when you're opening a new file. Mm-hmm. Java, you have to type all these extra things and curly bracket here yeah. and in the body. Oh, just yeah, give definitely. me straight to the point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely a little on the thicker end over at Java. Yeah. Um, so would you say that your, that, that EA comp like backs you up in mentorship while learning that, or this is something that you have to do completely on your own? Uh, no, EA has definitely been um, a great support as far as me kind of getting my foot in the door and finding, you know, my place within my team and even within the company. Mm-hmm. My manager is constantly saying, you know, if you want to try this, just let me know, you know. We're here to help you grow. So we just did end of the year self-evaluations. And you kind of can kind of leave a comment and say what you want to work on and they'll work with you i remember my first week there i sat on i sat in on a meeting that had nothing to do with my job or anything like that it had to do with like hairstyles in this a specific game so i thought that was pretty cool that you, other teams are pretty much open to having a, a stranger sitting on on a call about mm-hmm. you know game animation or game development when i work in security oh that's dope so yeah. are you guys are you guys fully remote at the moment or uh yes yeah, so the Orlando office is actually in the process of opening back up mm-hmm. um okay but I travel back and forth so and then if I relocate to Charlotte North Carolina I'll be completely remote which is no problem for me I've been on on board for going on 2 years now mm-hmm. um it'll be 2 years in mm-hmm. June mm-hmm. well May oh, the end of May but I have never seen anybody that I've worked with in person or anything like that. Um, oh, wow. The picture that I included in the deck, I took that prior to me starting. So I've actually been in the Austin office and the L.A. office, but never the Orlando office where I'll physically be working. Oh, oh OK. Well, you know, there's a first time for everything. No biggie, no biggie. Yeah, it'd be uh, quite interesting. <laughs> but none yeah. of my team is based in Orlando, so. Oh, okay. Okay. That, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, So uh, Letitia, she says she's studying Python now on Udemy. And I know you mentioned a little bit about Coursera. Do you, uh, do you suggest any Udemy courses? Have you looked into any uh, Python Udemy courses? Yeah. So I actually, um, I threw it in the resources. The Python course that I'm taking is actually on there. It's Python Bootcamp. I'm pretty sure they updated the title to say 2022 from zero to hero. So I feel oh. like I'm, I'm maybe at like 2% <laughs> working my way to hero. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. But yeah, that's a great course. I've actually found another one. I can uh, share that with her somewhere prior yeah. to or after the, after the, uh, the call. 
Yeah, of course. We could put it um in the live in the live chat. Um we'll we'll drop a link if we can. Um so I do have another question, right? Um so I wanted to know if you were a gamer before coming to EA and like what would if you weren't, like what was a big culture shock for you? Like were they talking about games that you had no idea about or what? Ah uh. I was a gamer, um, so weekends I used to spend with my older brother and my dad. So my dad and my brother were big Madden players. I would always just play for fun to kill the time during the weekends. So um, EA, e, Madden is an EA game, but I would always play on like rookie. You know, no seven-year-old is taking this game of Madden seriously. <laughs> but... <laughs> Outside of that, I wasn't a big gamer. Like I've had just about every game system, mm -hmm. but I pretty much suck at all games. I've tried to play different games. the The best game that uh, that I've played so far. I'm at, I'm only good at the Spider Man game that came out a couple years ago, and um, I recently just bought a, a, a Oculus Quest Two. And they have a bowling game on there, so I'm pretty good at that. But as far as, like, Apex, um, FIFA, Madden, I probably mm -hmm. wouldn't want me on my team. So <laughs> give, me a, give me about a, two months, and I'll, I'll practice for everyone, you know, <laughs> share my gamer tag and see, see, see what the progress looks like in two months. Okay. All right. We'll work. <laughs> we'll work on that. We'll work on that. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so, would you say that like security and gaming is something like super different from cybersecurity? Would you know like the major differences between that? Um, from what I can tell, and just taking the courses, um, well, specifically what I do on a day to day basis, I don't think there's much of a difference. Um, I'm sure other um, outside of gaming companies, security engineers probably do the same things that I do, especially blue team, blue team engineers, um, identifying vulnerabilities, staying up to date on the latest threats and everything of that nature. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's much of a difference except being at a gaming company, but it's definitely a, a, a shock because most people just see the final product of the game. They're sitting at home playing, you know, FIFA or Madden but they don't realize the things that happen on the back end. So as I'm starting as an intern and I'm sitting in these meetings and hearing about uh, everything that people are working on, I'm just like, who would have known that all of this happens on the back end of these games? Absolutely. Especially right, right before a major um, title is released. Mm -hmm. It's just like meetings on meetings on meetings. And it's just like, wow. I would have, if I, you know, didn't have this career in gaming, I would have never known or even crossed my mind that all of this has to happen in order to keep a company running. Oh, yeah. It's it's a lot, isn't it? Do you, do you ever have those moments where you might see another game and you're like slowly trying to like methodically think like what it took to put <laughs> that together? Like, oh, that, that, that had to be hard, you know? Yeah, especially just working in security in general, you just have a different mentality when seeing um, <laughs> seeing different things. So when you get like spam or spam email, you kind of let me check, you know, who is this sent from? Make sure everything is legit here or you're taking that extra step to turn on uh, MFA on your your accounts and everything. So. Mm -hmm. You get that code if someone tries to log in into your account or anything like that. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so <laughs> you were telling us a little bit about your experience in hackathons. So do you suggest hackathons for like beginners and like how can how can beginners leverage that in, in the interview, like as experience in the interview? Okay, I want to be completely transparent about my first hackathon <laughs> experience. I sucked. We placed second, mm -hmm. but I sucked. Yeah. So my role, you know, again, I didn't, I'm really zero coding experience whatsoever. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I sucked on the CSI program. I sucked in high school. That's why I just determined that it was not for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but so by the time I reached the hackathon, um, a buddy of mine, he well, a mentor of mine that was at my school, he worked at my school. He put me on the team, and I'm just like, why? Why would you do this? You set me up. <laughs> the the other three students that I went with, they were up the whole night. I stayed up just there for more support, but I literally made the PowerPoint within mm-hmm. two hours. <laughs> and that was that was pretty much it. So my first hackathon experience was actually pretty bad, mm-hmm. but I utilized being able to there were a lot of different companies there. So at the beginning, I walked around to the different tables, introduced myself, took business cards and kind of just networked that way. Mm-hmm. And I was lucky enough to have those teammates that I had that were able to produce a prototype that was mm-hmm. um, good enough for us to play second. Oh, so wow. That, that, that's that's how I was able to utilize my, my first hackathon. But I went in, in there, you know, just completely out of it not feeling like a team player i had nothing to bring to the team other than <laughs> mm-hmm. a powerpoint but i, I mean well clearly you had powerpoint <laughs> clearly you had something to bring you know you know letitia <laughs> she says oh man my first hackathon was exciting and terrifying at the same time they could definitely be intimidating <laughs> same i was excited to stay up for 24 hours surprisingly but <laughs> sad oh. that i couldn't bring anything to the team I felt, I felt so bad because they were mm-hmm. up working hard. I'm mm-hmm. watching the other schools around me just 24 <laughs> hours just up, sitting at the computer typing. And I'm just sitting there like, y'all need anything? You want to <laughs> slice a pizza from the table, a cookie or something, <laughs> coffee? <laughs> Not a slice of pizza. <laughs> oh, man, that's so crazy. Oh, but, I mean, listen, you're here now. You're in EA, so that's all that really matters at this point. So um, I wanted to know in your time while you were at EA, did you see, do do you see more women getting into um, security in general, or is it something like it's kind of slow? So Hmm. my team specifically, I am the only woman on the team. Oh, wow. Um, Luckily my manager is, is African-American as well. I have, I haven't seen, you know, too many women being bought in, but that's because I don't directly work with a lot of teams Mm -hmm. um, within the security. Mm -hmm. But I can say that EA has bought on a lot of um, people of color. They're actively working on recruiting from HBCUs. Oh, wow. And making sure that um, we get attention to those HBCUs and not just, you know, the ones that not dissing the main ones that get all the publicity, but some of the smaller ones like Johnson C. Smith, where I went, that probably has a student population of 1,200 students. Okay. Um, so that, that's been really great. Mm-hmm. Um, during my internship, we actually had a, um, a group EA Black interns, and I was able to connect with other Black interns. Mm-hmm. A buddy of mine that I actually went to the hackathon with, he was hired as well, just on another team. Okay. Well, we had weekly weekly sync ups where we were able to discuss everything that was going on during my internship. The the George Floyd incident was pretty big at the time. Oh wow! So it was just like a s- safe space where we could all just come get those mm-hmm. feelings off. So I was oh. really appreciative of that. Yeah, that's that's really dope. I like when companies kind of take the initiative to you know talk about the elephant in the room, pretty much. Yeah, just um, rip the bandaid off. Yeah, like <laughs> let's not act like <laughs> it didn't on. happen or what. Exactly. Don't make it awkward. Um, <laughs> so, if you could create an initiative, what initiative would you create that like would help women to be um, to get more into gaming? I should say. Ah, uh, that's that's something to think about. I definitely think that something along the lines of the. HBCU Tech Connect, where I was hired um, mm-hmm. at EA through something like that, but just for women in gaming, not even gaming, just in general, women in tech. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that'll be a good way to kind of help, you know, get more women in the door at some of these major companies, even, you know, local startups or yeah. just just getting their foot in the door in general in cybersecurity, 
it'll definitely be a good way to start. Uh, mm -hmm. Grace Harper is also a great initiative to getting women in the door. Oh, what's the name? Grace Hopper Conference. Oh yeah, Grace Hopper is huge. Yeah, I've actually had the pleasure of attending like the past two years virtually. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah. how was that experience? It was great. Uh, the first time it was a little more complicated because I was still in school. But this past year when I uh, attended, it was just amazing to see a thousand plus women in one room Mm -hmm. connecting breakout rooms sharing different resources in a bunch of different fields from cloud security analyst roles oh wow yeah okay. i spent <laughs> spent the week just saving zoom chats and looking back scrolling through seeing what resources <laughs> i could find myself to help to help myself out i'm not even mad at that you gotta use your resources girl seriously definitely um, uh, so you spoke a little bit. I know you said you, you didn't have any coding experience. A lot of us don't going into uh, some of these jobs. But um, how important would you say it is to get a mentor to help you with that? Like, would you say that you having a mentor was like a huge part of your success at gaining the role? 100%. I remember when I was first contacted about the, the role at EA, I went directly to my mentor and was just like, the job description says this. I don't even know what this means. And I have about three days to prepare before the interview. And he kind of just sent me over a bunch of different resources and to brush up on those skills. And I just spent the weekend learning those. So without his help throughout my years of college, I don't know that I'll be able to say um, that I would be sitting where I am today. Um, mm -hmm. He kind of just pushed me and helped me figure out what my true path was, what my passion was. Um, mm -hmm. He asked those difficult questions that made me sit back and think, like, is this something that I'm really going to enjoy? Exactly. And yeah. everything like that. So having having a mentor, even just uh, he likes to call them sponsors. But, uh, <laughs> having that sponsor is mm -hmm. huge because, you, you know, again, sometimes I know. Going into EA, mm -hmm. and I think they had only recruited from two HBCUs, and I came from one of them. Oh, and I knew the other guy. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of just like you're seeing people that go to Columbia University, and I go to such and such school down the street with a thousand students. It's kind of you face imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. So having that that sponsor, yeah. that mentor, mm -hmm. kind of just reassure you that you know you're here for a reason. If you weren't qualified, you you wouldn't be there, you know. So facts. Listen, yeah. that imposter syndrome is so real, and it and it sometimes doesn't even go away with the experience. So it happens. It definitely happens. I'm glad you touched on that a little bit. Um, I feel like. I wanted to I wanted to ask a quick question, but I'm gonna let Leticia uh, ask her question first. She said, um, "What is your suggestion for getting an internship with little to no real coding experience?" Um, my suggestion would be, uh, I would say, just kind of find those smaller projects, um, beginner projects mm -hmm. that that have a heavy impact, and putting those on your resume. I know coding. Um, when you're applying to those roles that are uh, code focused, recruiters look at you know your your GitHub and things like that. So becoming familiar with GitHub, um, pushing and pulling your projects to and from there. But I would definitely say, depending on the language, look up small but impactful. Um, uh, I lost my train of thought. Projects. Yeah, projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even it's just. So, something as small as a tic-tac-toe game, they see that you have that experience and, you know, you're able to build things. So probably going into your interview, they'll just ask you, you know, well, how would you go about doing this? They'll, they'll focus it on what you know and not what you don't know. Yeah. Well, speaking of the interview, what was of what you can say, <laughs> what was your interview process like at um, EA? 
my interview process at EA was it was pretty good again. I, I was bought onto the team fairly quickly about a week and a half out from my initial start date. So everything was pretty rushed. Um, I'm so sorry, there was a ladybug. <laughs> but um, I'm sorry, could you repeat the question that ladybug just <laughs> Listen, I'm terrified of bugs? I <laughs> don't even get me started. I will teleport across the room. Across <laughs> the bug. I just can't do it. I it's, that's the one thing I'm like, God, why'd you make these? Like, what was that for? Completely but pointless. It, <laughs> um, yeah, so um the question was uh what was your interview process like at EA? Okay. Yeah, so they kind of just asked things, speaking to what I had on my resume, um, how I worked on a team at this specific job, mm -hmm. what did I know about this? They reassured me that a lot of the things that I um, would be doing on the job, I would learn while on mm -hmm. the job because they use a lot of um, third party companies that don't have as much exposure as you know other companies that mm -hmm. people may have experience in. Mm -hmm. um, did so you yeah, work in algo, like an algo data structure type coding, nothing or nothing at all. <laughs> Praise God. Listen. <laughs> yeah, that's listen. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm I'm so willing to help anyone because mm -hmm. um I'm not gonna say that I didn't have that help, but there was no one outside of my mentor that I could lean on that was actually in the position that actually went through the interview process. Um for mm -hmm. my specific role, because I had zero experience as far as mm -hmm. anything, even prior to, I was fortunate enough to speak with my manager before the actual interview over the phone. Mm -hmm. And I kind of just let him know, I reviewed everything that was in the description. Uh -huh. and I'm gonna be completely transparent with you. <laughs> I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> and he was just like, you know, listen, you're going to learn half of the stuff on the job, you know. So my interview was more focused on, you know, I guess mm -hmm. personality and what I could bring as far as communication skills and just those little soft skills. Mm -hmm. So I was I was very fortunate to land my role. Oh, that's so awesome. I love that. Um, would you say, how would you say the diversity is at EA? Like, I know you mentioned, like, you're the only woman on your team and there's another black uh, manager that you have, but like, do you think EA is working on making it more div diverse or it's just like. Yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of um, people of color at EA. I just specifically don't have many on my team of six, mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> but I did have, I have, um, one one lady, she she actually just left the company um, to pursue something that was in her actual field. Mm -hmm. um, I think she was like a film major after okay. college, so she switched from cybersecurity back to film, oh. which was pretty interesting. Two totally different things, but um, it happens. It, it yeah. listen, it happens. It happens. Uh, so I've had um two black female mentors thus far um, since starting. A lot of the interns that were brought on during my year, the black interns were hired full time mm -hmm. or at least given offers. It was up to them whether they accept it or not. Mm -hmm. um, EA has those uncomfortable conversations as far as things that are happening throughout the world. Mm -hmm. They're actively telling us, you know, I've actually, during my internship, I was a part of um, kind of initiative to hire from HBCUs. So okay. myself and the other gentleman who had, came from Hampton University, and I think there was a Black young lady that attended Columbia, okay. we were able to go back to our schools and kind of just have those events in like our, well, attending an HBCU, you don't really have like a black organization the, yeah <laughs> but of course mm -hmm. uh, we were able to take those back to our schools and kind of just give information about internships and oh, that's dope. full time jobs and kind of let everyone know what the process would be like just yes. get feedback and things like that so I think they're continuing to expand on that mm -hmm. uh, 
Oh yeah. I, I like I like having the hard conversations. I know a lot of people are just like, mm, let's not talk about it. But <laughs> I remember the incident of George Floyd, um George Floyd and I, I went to my job at the time and I was like, Well, so what are we doing? <laughs> How are we standing in solidarity? What's <laughs> happening? So um, I definitely understand that. And I think that's pretty dope that EA uh, makes it a point to uh, have those tough conversations. Um, yeah. So Shay asked a question. This one's a really good one. Is there a subject or skill you wish you um, would have known better before starting at EA? Definitely. Um, again, I wish I could have learned a little more, a little bit more about coding, um, Python. I wish I would have knew working specifically on a blue team. I wish I was more familiar with um, just about everything under the sun. <laughs> um, so frameworks, mm -hmm. with frameworks, there were um, what specific port is responsible for what secure shell mm -hmm. and everything like that. Yeah. Those, those are some of the major things that I wish I would have known prior to. Because um, mm -hmm. sometimes I definitely feel like I'm a little behind, but then I have to remind myself that I'm one year into my career. Yeah. I have a lot of learning to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. just the basics. I wish I would have known the basics because, again, I went in with zero experience about anything. Mm -hmm. That's... <laughs> you know what? That's so real. Yeah, that is so real. I try so, to be as transparent about my journey because you know I, I'm not one to sell a dream because it. I listen. <laughs> you got people that's going to sell your dream. I'm gonna be completely honest about my journey because mm -hmm. it, it's my journey. It's 100 real, and my story could help someone else out. Absolutely, honesty is the best policy. To be honest, yep. So um, I wanted to know, like, where do you see yourself next? Like, obviously, you don't have to say I'm leaving EA, but just in general, like, what would be the next step for you in EA? Is there a plan that you have or are you just trying to grow and glow? In this definitely business? grow and glow. Um, mm -hmm. Within the next couple of years, I definitely want to get more certifications, Security Plus, Network Plus. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't decided which one I'm going to aim for first, mm -hmm. um, but again, both will probably be useful in the long run, as well as learning Python. Uh, mm -hmm. I definitely, I don't know if I can really say, I definitely want to take my manager's role and just have him move up to a higher role, but I want his position. <laughs> so I definitely want to continue to expand on our team. Mm -hmm. So again, I fall under endpoint security, but it's kind of just my manager and I on threat and vulnerability management. Mm -hmm. So if I could take his role, he could create his own role and then we just expand on the bottom row. Listen, everybody <laughs> could win if we just, you know, <laughs> let's move this way. <laughs> no, I definitely understand that. I'm, I'll be plotting like that in my job too. <laughs> you just move over and just... <laughs> yeah, just... Share the, share the little space a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, we have another question from Letitia. She said, um, what has been your experience finding mentors to support your technical journey? Yeah, I know you said you already have one. Where did, where did you find him again? <laughs> uh, so my mentor I actually was, again, like I, I, I have a lot of luck when it comes to certain things. Mm -hmm. Um so prior to attending Johnson C. Smith, I received this email. To be completely transparent, I always knew I had to go to college. I just had no idea what school I wanted to go to. That's fair. Um, it didn't click for me until 11th grade of, of high school that mm -hmm. I played a sport, so I had to maintain a 2.5. Um, oh, no, the questions are fine. <laughs> These oh, are good you're questions. good girl. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so 11th grade, I knew I, I had to maintain a 2-5 to play play a sport, and uh, it was just crazy applying to all these colleges, and, you know, you're submitting your email to many different places, and from that point, um, 
I received the email one afternoon about joining the Google CSSI program. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I met him. He brought me into that program. And luckily, he worked at Johnson C. Smith. So I had him all four years of school. But um, finding mentors outside of him has been, um, I pretty much just look to my, my peers at school, especially now. Uh, I have a friend over at Deloitte and he focuses on coding. I feel like people associate mentors with people being way older. I pretty much can consider everyone a mentor, my age or not. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone has some inf some kind of information to offer you. Um, so I've definitely found some of my um, classmates as good mentors as well. And oh, wow. even at work, just finding someone that may be in a specific role that you are interested in, even on LinkedIn, reaching out to somebody, you know, mm -hmm. kind of picking their brain about what it is that they do and how they got their foot in the door, how they got started in this specific field. Um, so I can say that my experience thus far has been pretty good finding mentors um, yeah oh, that's pretty dope that's pretty dope um i like the tip that you gave about going on linkedin listen linkedin is the plug LinkedIn yeah the plug. you can <laughs> find like almost anybody there just i remember i used to reach out to like at least probably like 20 people a day minimum when i was looking for a job i'm like hey you know, in the interest of the people that uh, had the jobs that I wanted. So I definitely understand where you're coming from on that. That's uh, definitely the advice I'm, I'm giving. I give to all my friends um, mm -hmm. that I still have in school. I'm just mm -hmm. reach out on LinkedIn, you know. Someone actually told me, you know, find someone with a recruiter role at the company that you want. Now some jobs even include the recruiters LinkedIn yeah. on the description. So, yeah, you know, shoot sure. them over a message worst thing is no response <laughs> listen it's a, and it's all right keep it pushing that's all just yeah. keep it pushing um um one of my last questions i want to ask is um so just as a black woman just how do you find how are you able to navigate this space as a black woman do you run into a lot of issues and usually if you do um how do you go about dealing with them like at work and stuff um I don't think that I personally ran into any issues yet. Mm -hmm. I kind of just sit back, take as much feedback as I can on something, but all of my questions are willing to be answered or, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not looked down upon because I asked a specific question. Um, mm -hmm. Again, everyone's just so committed to me growing within the company and within myself and in, in my career field mm -hmm. that, I am fortunate enough to not run into those problems. Um, oh, that's pretty dope. Okay. So, unfortunately, <laughs> it's not everybody's story, but I'm glad it's yours. Yeah. I'm glad that they are treating you right, um, especially as a black woman. It's just, it's a double whammy sometimes as a black woman and just being in the tech space. So, we really appreciate that. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. As Thank you, you so much for having me. Exactly. Everybody enjoyed having you. Um, we loved hearing about your journey. So we'd love to invite you back whenever we can. Uh, we want to definitely be respect respective of your time. And I'm not going to like go too deep into it. Okay. Yes. Thank you again. Everyone asks great questions. And I love what you all are doing at Mentor Me Collective. It's actually pretty inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. That warms my heart. I think we got one more question in the chat. Oh, yeah. The Python on Udemy. What was the name of it? Uh, Python from zero to here. Let me double click the link to make sure. Yeah. 2022 Complete Python Bootcamp from zero to hero. Um, Complete Python. I'm trying to look for it now, child. Let me see. It's zero to hero, right? Yeah, I could drop it in this one. Yeah, can you drop it in the chat for us. Um, I can send the link as well. For sure. Oh, let me know. thank you. We're gonna drop it. In, we're gonna drop the link. I'm sorry, y'all. I forgot to drop. It. Um, here we go. 
thank you guys for coming and asking such great questions. You guys have a great night. Have a happy Monday. We'll see you soon, okay? Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You too.